So, uh, what are we on? Day 12 now, so caravan of courage, yeah? That's what we're doing today? So, I, I did think about it. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, Battle no. of Endor. I get you. No, that's fair, fair shout, fair shout. A lot of people said the holiday special. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are very wrong. <laughs> I think people like to torture us, that's what it really is. I don't think it's anything to do with us watching it, other than them having to listen to us survive although, or not survive although, watching. Hot take. There is at least one film that we've watched over the course of this show where I would have rather watched the holiday special than that show episode. Uh, I will leave it to people to decide which one that was. Oof. Okay. So we're back. We're here. This is the last day. And because we're not watching uh, any of the kind of offbeat, off brand uh, main Star Wars films. Yep. I was thinking we should just. All of the Star Wars TV media. So we're going to do everything. We're going to do Clone yep. Wars, Rebels, all at once. Mandalorian, <laughs> Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, um, Droids, the Ewoks cartoon, uh, Visions. There's, there's, there's Visions, Tales of the Jedi. There's, 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 there's a lot of fucking Star Wars out there, isn't there? There is. So my thinking was we keep it to the films, um, and I've got 12 questions, basically. We can go through go these 12, 12, 12 points um, related to what we've just done and kind of cap it off in a nice way. Um, or not, and, you know, that's it's it's the start of January. The festivities are well and truly over, and... Uh, there's been, a, yeah. there's been a distinct lack of massive arguments over the course of this podcast series, so hopefully in this episode we can finally have a blazing row, uh, as is tradition when any discussion about Star Wars takes place. Um, before, before we do, you, you do your questions, and, I and again, I don't know if this is one of the questions or not, but I, I just thought I'd ask, overall, as a, as a project, as a, as a thing that we have done, thoughts? I've had fun doing the project, and, you know, I like a good project. Uh, I'm not sure I can say I enjoy the Star Wars films as a whole. I'm not Something's sure. changed about Star Wars, hasn't it? And, and this isn't just the kind of, you know, boomery, oh, when I was a kid thing. But, but fundamentally, something about Star Wars has changed in... It used to be special. Like, it was, it was, it was an event. And now it's just another blockbuster. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, I think... I think <clears throat> even my most loved films from this saga they're quite difficult to watch in isolation because Mm -hmm. of the nature of the universe that has been created and that means I don't go back and rewatch my favourite ones because it's quite difficult to just go back and watch your favourite ones and with the exception of Rogue One which is one of my favourites because that is a standalone that was the point um, I am so mortally disappointed and upset by what they then went to do with things it's kind of ruined the films that I do love which one specifically uh, when you say it's ruined the ones that you do love oh The Last Jedi like okay. it's, it's, it's it's a great movie and I, I, I mean I think we all heard me say fuck this movie repeatedly to Rise of Skywalker but it's such to have such good narrative storytelling to then have it completely fall off a cliff it's so unsatisfying I mm. felt very uns- when we came to the end of the Skywalker saga I felt quite unsatisfied by its conclusion uh, I know shock but there was no yeah that's it they've done it and as, as we said there's loads and loads and loads of media across the rest of the, the Star Wars universe <laughs> but that's where they've ended the films yeah I, I mean the rise of skywalker fails both as in, in my opinion as, as the summation of its trilogy <clears throat> and of the saga as a whole so it kind of doubly fails <laughs> and i think as we but i found it particularly noticeable in the sequels where we'd say things like oh but that's explained in a book or that's in a tv show or that's in a comic or in a video game tie-in, a third-party video game tie-in. And I felt that was less so with the prequels in the original series, where we had, 
you know, there was expanded universe stuff, and there's always book tie-ins. That's like a whole whole industry, and some of them are great, but <laughs> you didn't need them to follow the story. And now, with the sequels, you did to really mm. get the story, or to they've used kind of secondary media to fill in the plot holes. Is how it feels. You mean the mystery boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's. Oh, I'm, I, this is going to sound awful saying it, and I hate saying it, but I feel Star Wars has become a victim of consumerism. <laughs> or a victim it's of very capitalism. Much about, it's, it's very much about content rather than storytelling now, isn't it? Yeah, and I was hoping that I wouldn't come away with that feeling. I was hoping that I'd come away still really loving Star Wars. And I love some of Star Wars. And I love the, the way... It was my entry into so many new and different worlds as a child and how it was really kind of my start in a lot of fantasy and science fiction, as it was for millions of others. But I'm not sure I have that same feeling about it now. I'm not sure if I was a child now, if it would feel as special as it did when I was a child, just because it is now everywhere. You know, it was special in... The, the the prequel which was when I was a child you know to have the star, there were Star Wars toys everywhere but it was still special to have them I didn't have them but you know and that's not the case anymore it's just it's just everywhere everywhere no no I, I think that's fair uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily just the film's fault I, I think that also reflects the media landscape that we're in now absolutely but, absolutely yeah. that is the media landscape as much as anything else Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and yeah, as you say, uh, a, a victim of its own success, as it were. But uh, you threatened me with 12 questions uh, for this episode. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm guessing there's no jingle or anything like that. So uh, uh, f- fire away. Spin that wheel. Woo. OK, so first one, which you may need to come back to, but I'm going to say okay. uh, watch order. What order should people watch these films in? Ah, well, you see, I, I, I've already given that some thought because uh, we, we've, we've mooted it earlier on. And and I will caveat this by saying in my response, if I was to sit down and I wanted to watch the Skywalker saga, and, and, and I view that as the core story of Star Wars, at least the films, what order would I watch them in? Uh, and I would watch them in thus order. Uh, and, and just, I'm, I'm not including uh, Solo or Rogue One in this because I'm just looking at the, the Skywalker saga. I would watch uh, A New Hope slash Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith, Return of the Jedi, and then Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. And I wouldn't bother with one, two, or nine. That is how I think I will consume this saga in the future. Because if you go, it's kind of a revised machete order. I think if you go that way, you get the introduction of Luke Skywalker, you've got, you've got you know, your classic Star Wars story, your, your adventure, you've got Empire Strike Back, which is fantastic. You have the reveal that, no, Luke, I am your father. Then you have a flashback to basically how Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader without having to deal with all the incel bollocks. Plus, it kind of takes away that the Clone Wars ultimately is about trade disputes. Uh, and then you come back for Return of a Jedi. And if I could get away with leaving out The Force Awakens, I would do, but I don't think you can do The Last Jedi without The Force Awakens. But I do think The Last Jedi gives you a great place to stop the story, the saga. I completely agree with that. That is the exact order I had written down. Um, I think you can st- I think that reframes it not as a Palpatine saga which is essentially what we have now I know they call it the Skywalker saga but it's not it's about how Palpatine manipulated the Skywalkers and ultimately was defeated by nobody um, you mean his granddaughter <clears throat> yeah uh, so it's, 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 it's a Palpatine saga uh, not a Skywalker saga and I think reframing it to the only one I would add in is um Rogue, uh, Rogue One before Star Wars um, to give some some wider context but I think that's very take or leave if that makes mm. sense um, but I think you're right I think starting with Star Wars and then Empire you get Luke and it frames it as Luke's story which is what it originally was um, or Luke and Leia I guess but predominantly Luke um, yeah. then you go back and learn the backstory of Darth Vader excellent um, 
that is and still doing it, with, doing it with just Revenge of a Sith as well. Like I said, Anakin is so bad in Attack of the Clones. He he, going back to is Anakin Skywalker redeemable? I mean, okay, the, the murder of the younglings is very bad, but honestly, it's just his performance in Attack of the Clones. It's the most irredeemable thing he does. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, <laughs> And I think, yeah, going, I think there's a lot of problems with Revenge of the Sith, um, especially with the way Padme is treated. But hey, she's only in one film, so it's not the end of the world at that point. Um, then you go back to Return of the Jedi, uh, which, you know, and then, yay, they win, woohoo. And then Force Awakens, these are the new heroes. Luke's missing, dun dun dun. Han Solo dies. And then The Last Jedi, I think, is a good place to end it. You know, it's up to Luke, it's up to Leia and the remains of the resistance to go forth and continue the story. And it's just that final shot of the boy with the using the force to pull the broom over. It, it's that suggestion of hope and that exactly. the force will continue and the galaxy will continue. And, and yeah, I don't need everything kind of wrapped up in a nice little bow. That is a good ending for the saga on a, on a note of hope. Yep, I think I think that's that's fine. I think you could um, add the solo movie in if you really wanted to. Um I just don't know where you'd put it. And Han Solo, I think for me watching through all this again, Han Solo is not a, not, I know he's one of the three main leads, but this is really Luke Skywalker's, the originals especially, they are focused on Luke Skywalker. Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford are uh, still, you know, the, the top tier, top list actors, but they're definitely not the lead. Luke Skywalker is the lead. It is his trilogy. Well, you know, um, people talk about the hero's journey. It is Luke's journey is that hero's journey. And, exactly. and that's, that, that's the saga we're going on. And I know they've tried to reframe it since as the Skywalker saga or Anakin's story, but, but it's really Luke's story. And everything in the prequels is just adding context for when we get to Luke's story. And everything we get in the sequels uh, is, I, I think it suffers because it loses sight of that. Exactly. And I don't think that's... I think it's right to have moved on to new people or a new generation. You know, you want your you want your however many billion, eleven billion dollars they spent on Star Wars, or was it four billion? However much Disney spent on it, you know, you want your investment to cash out. Fair enough. That's the world which, we live in. Which it did after the first film, but that's besides the point. Well, yeah, beside <laughs> that, um, you know. But what do you what do you want? And actually, I think what we found is the stories away from the Skywalkers are by far the more interesting ones that are being told. You know, and away from that key narrative of of Luke and, and everything else. So, I think we could. I think you could have had those six, seven films. Is it six films? Uh, one, two, six yeah, films. Be six films. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, those six films, possibly with a with um, Rogue One to make it seven at the start if you wanted, and then I think that still gives you space for the Ahsoka series and Rebels and. Even the Clone Wars series kind of still works there because it's it's just building on what you already have in Return of the Jedi, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Well, I mean that's the thing. I I, I think that the Clone Wars series uh, does a much better job of fleshing out Anakin Skywalker as a character and why someone you should care about when you get to uh, Revenge of the, uh, Return of the Jedi and everything. Uh, far better than Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace did. But then it had however many hours to do it I mean just the final series of the Clone Wars alone is, is, is spectacular although that's more on Ahsoka but that's besides the point it's cool I like it okay do we feel we're done with watch order have we have we set out the watch order for Star Wars as it should be forevermore well as, as, as always this is our personal view so if, 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 if you're someone who decides that their preferred watch order is they want to sit down and watch the Phantom Menace Attack of the Clones and then jump to the Rise of Skywalker and maybe throw Solo in there we're not going to judge you we are but you know you do you I think there's elements you could take out of um, A Phantom Menace to make like a 30 minute short about the childhood of Anakin Skywalker. If you wanted to, but uh, yes, that, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's that. Uh, I know someone did it. They did that a while ago, didn't they? They did a, a, a machete cut of A Phantom Menace where they, they removed a ton of Jar Jar. It was all black and white and it was very well received. Can't remember who did it, but... Those things exist out there. As I said on the Rogue One one, my preferred way to watch Rogue One is the Maple Films cut, which is basically just the Battle of Scarif with John Williams' music, and it's fucking awesome. Okay, next question. Okay. Best film in the series, as in best cinematic narrative film. Not the most Star Wars film, that's the next question. What is the best film in this series? Ah. <sighs> 
starting out this project, I was convinced I was going to say it was The Last Jedi because I do love that film. And I think cinema, from a cinematic standpoint, from a production standpoint, from everything, I, I think that um, The Last Jedi is a masterpiece. But having just gone through and watched all this, I'm going to give it to Empire Strikes Back. I, I think Empire Strikes Back might edge The Last Jedi out for me right now. Ooh. It just does it so well. It 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 knows exactly what it's trying to do. It knows the story it's trying to tell. And as we said at the time when we did that episode, Empire more than anything else made Star Wars what Star Wars is today. Yeah, Empire is the one that set up Star Wars to be what it is. New Hope is a great story on its own, but Empire, I think Empire visually, and I'm sure I said this at the time, Empire visually is is where I expect Star Wars to be. Mm-hmm. And it's great um for me i can't actually decide between uh the two you've mentioned ironically in yeah, terms the last of Jedi and empire isn't it <laughs> and i feel i feel the reason i can't uh, decide between the two is because they're made 40 years apart and yes. just uh style and and cinema works differently between those two i think it's an unfair i can't pick it's one not, of it's two. an unfair question you've asked me here rachel <laughs> <laughs> I don't, well, yeah, it's, I always think it's like people say, um, who's better, like a, a footballer from the 1960s, you know, the best footballer from the 1960s or the best footballer from from 2024, 23. Um, like, oh, it's well, the gymnastics gold medal, well, isn't it? You know, when someone shows you, here's someone winning a gold medal in like the 1950 gymnastics and here's someone in the 2012 Olympics. And it's just like, I mean, even I could do the one from the uh, 1950s one. No, no, calm down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think... I think it's unfair. Mm. I find it unfair to try and. Um, I can't put, it, put those two basically are the yeah. most, but cinematically the best in for me. Um, and then it's Rogue One very closely afterwards, very very closely afterwards. You see, I, I disagree on Rogue One one, but that's just look. We did a whole episode about that, and that's just me personally. I, I, I still maintain Rogue One. I think the last forty five minutes of that are near perfection, uh, but the first two thirds of the film are a bit muddled. But we're not going to relitigate that at this point. Okay, so that's best film. What is the most Star Wars film? The best Star Wars film. The one that sums up Star Wars as Star Wars the most for you. Well, well I, I feel there's no surprise to anyone who's listened to anything that I've ever done. But for me, it's Revenge of the Sith. Uh, uh, and while a, a strong case could be made for Star Wars, not New Hope, Star Wars, as being the most Star Wars film, because, you know, it's called Star Wars, uh, and kicked it off. And it was the one when George Lucas probably had the most freedom to, to make. Um, his Flash Gordon TV serial one I think with Revenge of the Sith it has all of the elements of a 1930s Flash Gordon serial, you've got Ian McDermott chewing all of the scenery all over the place Uh, you've got high stakes, you've got action you'll have the tragedy of Darth Plagueis for wise I thought not Uh, I, I love it uh, it's got the melodrama in there as well. It's even got the stupid cheese that makes no sense. She's lost the will to live. Uh, that's that's pure 1930s sci-fi serial for me. So uh, for, for me, it's Revenge of the Sith. I can see where you're coming from. <laughs> um, but for, I, I cannot give it to Revenge. I'd like to because I think you're right in almost everything you, like you said. You'd like to because I'm right, but but nevertheless. No, no, I'd like to, but I cannot get over the way that film treats the women in it and how poorly... The woman, the, the woman um, in it. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I cannot... That choice, those, those, style, those directing choices of how she is portrayed, to me, cannot be how women are, how women are portrayed in Star Wars. That is not so because of that, and purely because of Padme's treatment in that film, which admittedly is better than the, than Attack of the Clones. Um, but still, I, I feel it cannot be the Star Wars film, the one that epitomizes Star Wars the most for me because of that, because Star Wars treats its women better than that most of the time. So based on that, I'm actually going to go for Return of the Jedi. I mean, it, it treats its women better than that most of the time. Or rather, it treats the woman better than that most of the time because there's only one woman in the galaxy at any one time, generally speaking. Well, exactly. Um, um, but okay. yeah, I just just the way the way they treat women in that, I I cannot 
I mean, it's an interesting choice going Return of a Jedi. Obviously, you have the, the infamous scene where Leia is forced to be a sex slave for, for Jabba, and then later then on, when she encounters. Uh, well, it's a sex game that's gone wrong. Uh, and, and then later on, when um, in the Ewoks village, decides to, to drop the commando gear for a lovely little dress they just happen to have lying around there. Um, but okay, yeah, that's fair enough. But for me, that's the that's the, the hammy stuff. That's the, the woman's changed outfit because she's in it, you know, that for me, that is the bit that sums up the the melodrama and the silliness or helps with it and for all i don't like yubnub and the end shot with the ewoks bit um i think again that's that's an age thing um i think that that does epitomize star wars it's silly it's it's about a resistance and a rebellion beating the big evil empire and that happens, and you get the Rachel, willy. Rachel, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> you're making a choice, and I can't follow. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Well, well, we've disagreed on something. There you go. You see, excellent. Yeah, as, 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 as is the spirit of the season. <laughs> I'm now going to go make a four-hour YouTube video about why you're wrong. Oh, um, that's fine. I look forward to detail. it. Um, and then we. I'll, just... give, I'll give it precisely one view. <laughs> <laughs> What is the best era of Star Wars films? So, for clarification, we're talking prequel era? Yep. Empire era? Or, I'm guessing, First Order slash Resistance era, yes? We're talking originals, prequels, yeah. sequels. Okay. And and, and what's, what's your uh, qualifier for best? Uh, what do you think is the best? Uh, well, you tell me what, what best is qualifying is. Like, well, I, well the, the best for me is going to be what, what do I enjoy the most? Okay, and, and, what, what and do you as enjoy a, the most? Well, based on that, it's going to be the originals. I think overall, I have more enjoyment out of the original trilogy than either the prequels or the sequel films. And although the prequels are much more visually interesting and dynamic... Um, I, I once heard Adam Savage describe the best way to watch the prequel... Uh, films is in a different language with the subtitles off and that's fair because they're wonderful to look at but the dialogue and the script and the plot is yeah, it's not great and with uh the the, uh, the sequel trilogy again very very pretty but very derivative and rise of skywalker does make me very angry so on, on the basis of that i'm going to go with the, the classic era plus under that aegis, you also get things like the Mandalorian and everything going on there. So, you know, you, you no, need classics. No, no, I'm talking about the, the actual physical film. So which which set of films? Not, not oh, there's well, the Mandalorian. The I just said it. Oh, okay. I thought you meant and the and the TV series is set in that point. No, so I you, you, you just said eras. And in the era of it is the original trilogy, you also get the Mandalorian. Okay, fair enough. And Ahsoka. Yeah. I really want to say the sequels but I absolutely can't. I want to say the sequels because there's one really, really good film, but mm -hmm. the others are so bad. And I can watch The Force Awakens, but I cannot watch Rise of Skywalker. It is an unwatchable film. So I have to discount the sequels because of Rise of Skywalker. Pretty much the same reason I did it. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the prequels, yeah, they've got a lot of, you know, that, that was when I was a child and everything else. But as you say, they are, they're, they're, they're not good. They're not... <laughs> That George Lucas had all the money in the world and no one to tell him no. And that was the problem. And that was a problem. Um, vi visually a problem. Uh, scripturally a problem. Narratively a problem. Just generally a problem. We're both agreeing the, the, the original series is, is the best yes, era? Yes, yes. Yes, we're, we're back oh. to unity. After, after that mild disagreement, we're back to unity. <laughs> okay, this one, this one we might disagree on. Uh, yes. Best track or best score best musical piece per set of three mil three films so just the films so just the the, the original Oof. prequel i mean that's really difficult uh, mostly because I, I don't actually know a lot of the tracks from um the sequel era i, I mean i would say for the prequels uh, the temptation of it is to say jewel of the fates but i'm actually going to go with battle of heroes from revenge of the sith no, ooh, oh, no, or, or do I do the intro track from Revenge of a Sith? Because I love those drums and the way it kind of morphs into the Star Wars. Ooh, yeah. For me, I'm actually going to go with the opening track from Revenge of a Sith because I just love those drums. Uh, very, very cool. But second for me is Battle of Heroes. In the original trilogy, I'm probably going to go with the asteroid chase from Empire. 
Okay. Although close second is the Emperor's Throne Room from Return of a Jedi, because I love the vocal piece which bikes up when Luke goes, No! And then starts wailing on Vader. Um, and from the sequel trilogy, because it's the only track from the sequel trilogy I can remember at all, therefore by process of elimination must be the best, I'm going to go with Ray's theme, because I can't remember any other. Okay, uh, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Controversial choices. Uh possibly even lazy choices who knows um how dare you call me out with these questions that you gave me literally 30 <laughs> seconds before we started recording <laughs> you could have you could have taken some time you could have taken some time it's fine i can edit um i think uh i've got two for the prequel series um well tough you can uh, have one <laughs> well i'm torn between uh, battle of the heroes um mm-hmm. because it is a really good track, <laughs> and it's got, it's got bits of Jewel of the Fates in it as well. So you kind of you kind of double yeah, dip, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, but secondly, I'm actually going to go for the music from the chase scene through Coruscant in Episode Two. It's the only good really? thing in that movie. Yeah, wow. it's a really good. It's got high energy. You know, it's got Anakin there chasing a bounty hunter. It's through the city. I don't know. It's just it's a it's a driving track, um, hmm. and I, it's just yeah, it's good. It's disappointed. Neither of us have gone with any jizz. No, no jizz today. Okay, fair. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, I've gone for a track that's eleven minutes long. So okay. you know, it's it's pretty long. It's, it's, you, there's got to be something you like in eleven minutes. You um, hope so. <laughs> you'd hope so. Um, I'm, I'm amazed you didn't go for the Anakin, the bit where Anakin is betrayals. Um, you know, the Order sixty six piece of music. Uh, it's, it's a good it's a good bit of music as well. But I love the drums at the beginning of Avenger of the Sith to the point where I went out and bought the soundtrack for Revenge of the Sith when it came out and I was pissed that that track's not on there so then I had to go and get the extended edition of the track which does have it on there but that opening sequence you know you you got these war drums beating and then you get the shot of the two fighters going by and it whizzes along the surface of that Star Destroyer and then the music kind of jumps up into like the, the, the hero music from the Clone Wars and that's just cool yeah it's really cool isn't it yeah, it's fucking cool, yeah. Um, but yeah, my second is the Assassin Chase through Coruscant. Uh, but it is 11 minutes long, so, you know, mm, yeah. uh, listen to it at your own, uh, at your own pace. Um, the or original peril. Si- <laughs> Yeah, or Peril. Uh, the sequels, um, my favourite piece of music from the sequels, and I think it's actually one of my favourite pieces of music in Star Wars at all, um, is March of the Resistance. Possibly slightly overused, um, because they then start to use it every time the, the Resistance turn up. It's John Williams at his absolute best. Uh, in in the sequel series and he it kind of reflects the imperial theme quite nicely um it's got the drums it's got the horns it builds it's just it's a really it's a really complex good piece of music that it makes you feel something it makes you feel like yeah they're gonna get them and then you realize you're watching rise of skywalker um and you want to gouge your own eyes out but the music's nice yes no no i'm good with that what was your, what was your 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 addition? Original trilogy. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh uh, so uh, ha, did you just do the original trilogy one, or have you still got to? Oh, do no, that? no, you said you had one to add in. No, so no, I've got one to add, but I'll add it at the end when you finished all three of yours, because because. Oh, okay. I'll explain oh. when we get there. I'll explain when we get there. Okay, explain <laughs> when we get there. I mean, the temptation is to go for the Imperial March. Yeah, um, I, and I didn't because I thought you couldn't have a go at me for being too obvious there. But yeah. it is. Or it's a banging Wars- track for a reason. <laughs> it is. Or the Star Wars main theme. But the again, Force theme is great. I, is the, problem, the problem with the Star Wars main theme is Rise of Skywalker's ruined that for me. How come? Well, in that final bit where all of the fleets arrive and they oh, yeah, play and the they Star play Wars it. main theme, mm. and it's just so out of place. It just really annoys me. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, so actually, I'm going to go for Princess Leia's uh, piece of music. That's uh, a great choice. Yeah, absolutely. Which is played again in the sequels in really subtle and nice ways and it ties in really nicely with her Han and uh, Han and Princess Leia's kind of love piece of music that also exists um, but yeah I really like uh, Leia's theme it's just it's different yeah no no it's, it's, it's a great theme and absolutely uh, very much worthy but so, go on, so give me one... your, your extra your extra edition I, I, I would I, I put it for court uh, I, I would like to enter it for consideration the music from the first trailer for The Force Awakens, which 
I, I love that bit of music because it's a medley of like all of the main kind of classic themes from Star Wars and it kind of whizzes through them and, it, and it's updated and it's modern and, and there was so much potential and love in that piece of music that I, I downloaded that track and I actually added it onto my copy of the, um, the Force Awakens soundtrack because it's so good. I, I, would, like to, I would like to just at least have it as a, a honourable mention is the trailer music from The Force Awakens as, as a absolutely amazing piece of John Williams Star Wars music. And not just because the trailer gives you so much hope for this amazing movie that never uh, never existed. Oh, so so much so much hope, and it's so annoying. Um, I will I will allow you to have that piece of music you. because you know it's 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 the end of the project. You've been good. You know <laughs> you can have it as a treat. You can have an extra piece of music that wasn't part of the original parameters as a treat. Okay. Well, and while while we're on the topic, then so so we, we've all said uh, our favourite John Williams pieces of Star Wars music. Um, Favorite non John Williams piece of Star Wars music? Ha ha! See, Ooh. I can throw, I can throw Ooh. questions to you without any warning. You're gonna, you're gonna say the Mandalorian theme tune, right? No, I'm not. Although the oh. Mandalorian does have some amazing music in there, and on, I'm surprised neither of us went with anything from uh, Rogue One, which has great piece of music, especially when most Star Destroyers are crashing down and destroying the um, the Shield Gate. There's some great stuff here, but I'm actually gonna put it in for burying the dead. Uh, by Kevin Kiner, which is the, the last bit of music from the end of the Clone Wars, which is just a beautiful little piece of music that you know, it, it it kind of really hits you in in that moment, and it's a great little little bit, uh, a, a great way to kind of capstone the end of value of Star Wars, and that, that's my nomination there. I'll allow it, I guess. Thank you. Well, you know. Don't really have much, you don't really have much choice in it because... Uh, no, I don't. I'm... Well, that being said, though, you are editing it, so you could just make it so this never happened. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you another great bit of music from... Um, uh, it's not Jedi Survivor, the first one. Fallen Order? Um, there's, there's the bit of music that Cal Kestis is listening to when he's on the train on the way to the scrapyard. That's a banging bit of music. <laughs> oh, that is a banging bit of music. Moving away from kind of the wider stuff, let's 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 nail it down in here. Let's nail down Star Wars. Who is the best character? Now I, I can see a, there's a there's a question coming up ahead of us. Uh, so you're asking me best character, but you also then have most loved slash favorite character. So my question is, what is what what, you, what are your character? Uh, what what is your definition of best that is separate from favorite? I mean, the best character, as in who is the the best narrative, the best journey, who has who is the best character or the most intriguing character, the one that delivers the most? Your favourite doesn't, you know, your favourite character does not have to be the best character by a long way. I mean, I suppose if a question is, by best, we're saying who has the, 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 the biggest range over their journey, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be Vader slash Anakin. Even using the, re the reduced machete order, whatever you want to do, you know that, that's uh, that's quite a whirlwind we go on there. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm just trying to. You see, you see by saying best, you you you, you really really, um, but best not being favourite. It's, it's it's really kind of stifling there. So I'm just trying to think. I mean, it can also be your favourite. That's allowed. Well, I, I know that is, but uh, I mean, that's the other thing. Is who would I say is my favourite? Again being forced to limit it to just the films <laughs> yes limiting to just the films because we've only watched the films I, I mean if I was going to cheat a little bit I would actually probably say it's Cassian Andor but most of that character the development it doesn't matter yeah, but, that, that it yeah, doesn't matter the, the, the character development stuff takes place in the series which again is cheating because you're getting a lot of that backstory and stuff is fleshed out not in the films that doesn't matter um, Okay. That is your favourite no. character in the film. Not the best. Cassian Andor is not the best character in the movies, but they are your favourite because no, of. I'm not of saying they're they my favourite. I'm not saying they're my favourite. I'm trying. I'm That's trying to heard. establish best by your rules here. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I heard is is Cassian Andor is your favourite character in all of Star Wars. Look, Cassian Andor and fucking Andor is fucking amazing, uh, and he's a lot of fun. Um, who's your best? What, what do you put as the best character? So I think. You're right. I think Vader possibly is the best character in this wider piece that we've got. He has the most impact, even though it's technically the Emperor kind of directing him. But I'd say most iconic. Certainly most iconic. Um, and I think 
he is his presence is still felt in the sequels even though he's not there and I think that's that's a really good character that can do that yeah I also think you could argue that Luke is one is the best character um, but then I think the prequels do a lot to take away from that if you didn't have the prequels and I think if you're looking at just our reframed order Luke mm-hmm. is the best character because um, it's his journey um, yeah. and it's framed as such but yeah I think I think best as in yeah the most um iconic the one that has the most impact on the narrative and the one that kind of resonates is Darth Vader mm. fair okay yeah I'll, I'll go with that favorite character though that one's easy for me okay who's your favorite then it's Palpatine <laughs> it's Palpatine although, although with, with the caveat Rise of Skywalker we're just not touching that but but I'm um, oh, sorry Ian McDermott knows exactly what films he's in at all times and he's having the fucking time of his life in every frame in every shot that he is in uh, and he's a sassy bitch I mean you look at him in Revenge of the Sith City you know they've captured Palpatine they've taken him to, 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 to the ship as a hostage and they've given him his phone from Return of a Jedi and given him a wonderful panoramic view of a battle going on he still is commanding even though he's a prisoner and just the, the line delivery have you ever heard of a tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Just just the way he is chewing on all of the scenery. Go, oh, I'm afraid the deflector shield will be quite operational when your friends arrive. I, I love him. He's so much fun. So for me, my favourite character is Palpatine. That's fair. Um, I have two that I struggle to, to decipher between, um, and that is Obi-Wan Kenobi um, and Princess Leia, or General Leia. Um, I think... As a woman and growing up, you know, Princess Leia, she is the self-rescuing princess. She is strong, independent. She she's the only woman in most of the series. <laughs> um, also ignoring <laughs> Rise of Skywalker because fuck that fucking movie. Um, yes. But yeah, it's, when you it's, say Obi Wan, which which Obi Wan though? Oh, you know which Obi Wan. You know oh, which yeah. Obi Wan. <laughs> Um, just, 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 just sitting here stroking my moustache in the same manner that uh, old Ewan hmm. would. Hello there. <laughs> um, and I think, yeah, obviously the Obi Wan series was not great um, for for reasons we have uh, mentioned throughout. But I think Ewan McGregor makes Obi Wan a great character, a really great character. Um, and some of the kind of comics and stuff that he's been in are really great and I like it when he turns up in Rebels and other things um, but the same with Leia she's she's a beloved character and is treated as such thankfully um, but she she is a Jedi you know when we we were ignoring the last movie because fuck it um, you know she did go through her Jedi training she does have a lightsaber but she has picked another way to to fight the good fight without having to have the weapon of 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 the jedi you know that's for her brother to do and you know we don't she's had a child but she's not defined by having her child and her partner who is han solo who's fucked off um to have a midlife crisis somewhere um with his giant teddy bear um you know and yeah leia just encapsulates and i think as a kid she encapsulated so much um i named my dog leia for goodness sake like you know there's 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 some affinity to this this character and yeah she's she's uh, i think she does out when obi-wan actually now i'm speaking about it out loud yes yeah, oz <laughs> fair enough so Ge- general leia or princess general, leia depending on your princess general, general, slash, princess. Leia, general yes. slash princess leia organa you can go first. <laughs> oh, this one's tough. I don't actually think Jar Jar is the worst character. Oh no, not 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 by a country mile. Um, I think I mean, they I, are. I, I would I would go as far as to say that in Attack of the Clones, Anakin is the worst character. But that's only in Attack of the Clones. Yeah, and this is over the whole conglomerate of everything. And I'm, um, I'm reluctant to just pick people who are bit parts in only one because you know there's Dexter Jetster whatever his name is the uh the, the, the diner owner who's pretty terrible um yeah but as you say it's it's one yeah one scene so, in one movie so I think that I think the most useless character which is not the question I've asked but the most useless is Bubba Fett absolute waste of time what is the point in this guy <clears throat> dead he does have a cool co- uh, costume, though. He does have a cool costume, but he's he's the shittest character. But he's not the worst. Um, 
I'm I'm tempted to say the worst is C-3PO because he annoys me so much through way more of this movie than I uh, way more of the series than I remember he's super irritating I, um, a lot of that comes down to the prequels and the sequels because in the original trilogy C-3PO is not thirds. as annoying that's two thirds of the series yes, I, I, I'm however making a point that Going into this, I was expecting to hate three PO throughout, but he is the, the trope of him being really annoying only really came about in the prequels, and then it was dialed up to eleven in the sequels. So, but again, three PO is an absolutely valid um, one to put in there. I don't know if that's the one I would put. The, so, so who is the worst for me? Ah, tricky, tricky, tricky. Who would I put as worst character? Oh, actually, I know who I'd put down as worst character. Go on then, who's the worst character? It's Newt fucking Ginray. Oh, oh. The, the racist stereotype oh. from The Panther Menace, who is kind yeah. of responsible for everything. It's, it's a terrible stereotype. It's a useless character which goes nowhere and doesn't really seem to do anything. And yeah, uh, it's, it's Newt Gunray I would put down as the worst character. And okay, it's only in the prequel films, but look, uh, if, if it's got to be across the multi- bulk of films, I, I can't help you. But yeah, I, I would probably go with Newt Gunray is, my, is certainly my least favourite and arguably worst character. That, that, that's that's my one. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I will I will accept that is is, but yeah, C three PO in the in the prequels and the sequels was just awful. Yes awful awful um and that's kind of my main chunk of people if i'm talking like more side characters or ones that uh, i yeah i i I agree with your your statement um but yeah i i actually kind of i've come out of this hating jar jar less than i remember he's really bad in the phantom menace but is basically written out of the next two other than to be an advisor to padme well he's just part of the delegation but he has I think I think two lines in all of Star Wars after Phantom Menace. And you know what? Delivered perfectly. Great. Love it. Yeah. Um, I, I would also possibly argue um, the worst character, um, which is of no fault of the person playing them um, and entirely down to the abysmal script and narrative, is Padme. Yeah. Uh, th- I, I think that's definitely a case to be made there. Um, she is given... She has no agency other than she was a non-democratically elected ruler slash princess child. She dates a forbidden Jedi, has a, and just she's she's and again, I'm not putting this down to the actress, but also uh, she's I actually mm, is she the worst character because her effects aren't felt any further than the prequels. She's not really. She's not part of the original trilogy um, at all. You know, it's not uh, it's not a point other than when Leia says, I remember my mother, um, which then she clearly doesn't. Um, <laughs> and then she has no, Im- like, I am so bored of it always being about Darth Vader and, and Anakin and never about Padme when, you know, there's, there's two of them here, two of them made these children. Um, and I think, well, actually, is Padme the worst character? Oh, maybe Padme's the worst character. Padme's Padme's pretty terrible, but I I am personally reluctant to award worst character to one of only two female, well, three female characters in the entire Star Wars saga. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know it's tough, isn't it? It's it's like the worst character, barely in it. Uh, But I think Padme has had so little effect. She was was a womb for this, basically. She was a a MacGuffin. And then she lost the will to live. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I am going for Padme. As a woman, I'm going to say Padme. I, I I know she's one of only, like, two prominent women, but she could have been so much more. She could have been so much better, and they got the talent in to do that, and they wasted it. And they wasted it narratively. You know, she is never referenced again. Once she dies... That bitch is gone. You know, there's nothing. She is, she is, but it's all about Anakin. For the I mean, reason. You say, that. You, say, you, say, you say that, Rachel, but you do know there was a comic where you can find out how she got her red arm. Nah, fuck it. C3PO is the worst character. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a toss up between the two for me, but I, I accept your, your, your racist trade dispute uh, as well. <laughs> it's, it's pretty terrible. This is, I guess, 
a, a bigger question, maybe? Okay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is the biggest misstep in the entire series? Hiring J.J. Abrams to do the third film in the sequel trilogy. Not to do the first in the sequel trilogy as well? No, because as, as the issues I have with Force Awakens, it, it's a bad film. And yeah. Phantom Menace is a bad film. Attack of the Clones is a bad film. Um, it, it's fine. And a lot of people really enjoy the Phantom Menace, uh, uh, Force Awakens. You know, even when I watched it for this one, it's not offensively bad and terrible. But by bringing him back to do The Rise of Skywalker under the time constraints that he had when he he had a very distinct image in his mind how he wanted that trilogy to go and decided to he was going to do that trilogy even though that isn't what's set up effectively you could watch force awakens and rise of skywalker leaving out the last jedi and it would make as much sense as if you had watched it probably makes more sense than watching last jedi in between you know, might be it, less angry as well, to be honest. I, I might well be. I, I, and I think I said this at the time when we did the uh, Rise of Skywalker. I said, if you went, if Rise of Skywalker was the second in a J.J. Abrams trilogy, I'd probably be less annoyed with it than I am as it as the final film in the saga. Because basically everything that Leia's doing with Rey in Rise of Skywalker, I think is what he wanted Luke to be doing with Rey at the time. Um, what, having yeah, half I, conversations that make no sense? As in training her to be a Jedi. Oh, uh, oh yeah, that yeah. I guess you, that's you, also. You were there. In fact, I believe you've edited it, so you, you you've listened to that many times. You, you know what I'm talking about. But I think I do. I do. In, in, in the macro sense, what's a biggest misstep? And without basically turning around and say making that film or you know how, doing the, doing anything beyond the first three films, I think the biggest misstep was having J J Abrams be the director of Rise of Skywalker. Okay. I, I think that's a, a really solid uh, answer. I'm not... I, I agree. That was a pretty big misstep. Um, I'm actually going to go a bit further back than that, and I'm going to go to the prequels, and I'm going to say the misstep there was George Lucas directing and writing the prequels as well as everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think along the same vein as what you're saying, you know, having... Um, someone else come in and write those movies or direct those movies. I think directing particularly more than writing um, because that's how we ended up with Empire and Return of the Jedi um, is it was a it was it was taken away from George wasn't it it was it, other people kind of came ta- in it wasn't taken away but George Lucas had a uh, I think it was a heart attack after doing Star Wars and he couldn't cope with the stress uh, of, of doing that so delegated those responsibilities I, I will push back slightly on that one though uh, for a discussion that we had when we did the episode talking about the Matrix uh, Resurrections, in that those are George Lucas' Star Wars films because George Lucas wrote the films he wanted to make. They're not great. They're terrible. But they're the films that he wanted to make, whereas The Rise of Skywalker and the sequel trilogy, they are corporate films. And, and I yep. think the difference between what's going on with the prequel trilogy to the sequel trilogy is George Lucas is telling a story he wants to make. It's a terrible story. He shouldn't have made it, but it is his story to tell. And if we don't like it, well, tough. Whereas Rise of Skywalker was being made as a product to cap off 40 years of someone else's storytelling to give a satisfying conclusion to it. Uh, So I I think, although I do not like a lot of what Lucas did with... um, the, the prequel trilogy, I don't think it's my place to tell him he's wrong to tell that story in the way that he did. No, no, I, I agree. It's it's his money. It's his story. They're his characters. He can do what they want. Um, but I think that, I think it was definitely... He shouldn't have. He, he basically should have had someone else do it. I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, for me, I will take them as equal weighting is I think, I think if George hadn't had such a, a creative control of the prequels, we probably would not have ended up where we ended up. I think... I, I think, think I we, said at the time, it, the, the problem is Rick McCullum just didn't have the balls to tell him no, wasn't it? Oh, possibly equally that. But yeah, I think yeah. that's... So that's one... Yeah. Uh, but equally I will say bringing JJ back to do the last film um, and I think a different misstep um, they made and again this is this is corporate misstep is just churning films out or trying to churn films out so quickly 
Um, well, it's, it's setting the release date before you've even started the production, which mm-hmm. because you're tr- you're trying to hit a bottom line for a, a, a an earnings call, and it means when you do have things rise up like the directors left or you know there's just you know a pandemic's hit, you're still trying to force to hit a release date. You you know you're putting out a, a terrible product, and that's quite apparent. And I think so. I think that's an I, I, that is as much a misstep. And actually, that misstep is what led them to take JJ back in the first place. I think because it was someone that knew the property, knew the way they worked, and was available to do it right now. Well, I think I think what you have there is the same reason why they brought Josh Whedon in to do uh, the Justice League. It's because they <laughs> thought that the audience yeah. would be on board with it. They thought, oh, you'd love this other thing that they did, so we'll bring them in to do that. And I think that was the misstep there. I I, I think literally any other director that was brought in to do Rise of Skywalker without the baggage of having made the first one in the trilogy mm-hmm. and without having their own preconceived ideas over what would have happened after the first film would have been a better choice. But because it was JJ, JJ very much was like, well, I'm going to finish telling my story. But you're not George Lucas and you don't own it. Well, yeah. Uh, so, so... That that is uh, yes. I'm 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 sticking the blame for firmly on Mr. Mystery Box. In that case, biggest misstep narratively in the context of the story that we're being told. So not not creative choices or anything like that, but the actual. Ray Palpatine. Just that's it. No 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 discussion. Just Ray Palpatine. I mean, does if if, if you go back about what we're on episode twelve now? Go yeah. Back. Three episodes. Yeah, uh, there's, there's like an hour and a half of us talking about why it's an hour to misstep. But basically, undoing this sense that Ray is a nobody and her legacy is not important. She is important because of who she is, not because of who her parents is. And just turning around and saying, "No, nope, you're Palpatine." <laughs> That's the biggest narrative misstep. I can't disagree with you on that one. Yep. <laughs> I had something more posthumous uh, to mention, but no, nah, fuck it. It's Ray oh, no, Palpatine. Uh, just just, just no, have, no. Do you have interest. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and, well, I mean, I can. It was making Luke and Leia twins and not having Leia as a secret child in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. And then her being pregnant again. Um, yeah, I, I th- I'm, I'm, st- I'm sticking with Ray as a Palpatine. This yeah, mine, mine, was, mine was more subtle. I get it. Mine was a subtle answer. <laughs> yours was... Um, yours nope. had... Uh, nope, nope. Mine was, mine was a Death Star. You may fire when ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that didn't take as long as I thought that one might. Never mind. Moving on. Um, what was your? What was the biggest what-the-fuck moment or biggest surprise in the series? For you, not... For me? Yeah. And it's a moment in The Last Jedi, and it's a visual moment. It's the moment when Admiral Holdo uh, engages the hyperdrive to ram uh, Snoke's flagship because it is a shot unlike anything we'd ever seen in Star Wars prior to that. The music builds, you see the stars, and then it goes to absolute silence. And you have this amazing shot, which is almost in black and white, of this streak hitting the ship and then shattering, and all the Star Destroyers behind it shattering. And it was... It was the loudest silence I've ever heard in a cinema. And then there was the explosion afterwards. And it it, it stopped me dead. It was just like, holy fuck. At no point any, any time in any Star Wars film had, had a moment like that. And because I was born after the original film came out, I'd grown up knowing what lightsabers were. I'd grown up knowing that Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. But these weren't revelatory moments for me. So it didn't have that kind of impact. But that moment literally had an impact on me as in a whoa that was amazing so for me it's uh, the holdo maneuver i have the same um history with the property i guess as you do although i'm a bit younger i still wasn't yeah, yeah, just keep telling everyone about that yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> no no but but, but but there was no i always knew what lightsabers were i can't remember yeah. a time in my life when i didn't know what a lightsaber was or luke no you know no luke i am your father that that has always been in the pop pop culture yeah. kind of existence for my entire life uh, so there's no there's no connection to any of those being like big surprises because they're not surprises um i think i i, I i'm i'm going to pick a different uh what the fuck biggest surprise moment um because while i agree that that is visually that was like holy fuck something different Mm -hmm. um for the sake of picking something different um i'm actually going to say my biggest what the fuck slash surprise moment was in 
Rise of Skywalker. And it is when, out of absolute nowhere, Poe Dameron stands there and says, somehow, Palpatine has returned. <laughs> because yeah, that's, yeah, that's, there that, was that's, no... That's, that's a lot of what the fuck. <laughs> Because it had, and it wasn't, it wasn't surprises in like, oh boy, that's great. It was like the fuck, like it was, it was not a pleasant surprise. Um, because I wasn't playing Fortnite uh, at the time, um, and because I saw it on release day, and and this had been like hidden information. It was, it came so out of nowhere, and it completely, fundamentally changed the last fifteen years of my life, my understanding of Star Wars and what had happened and what we had been told had happened completely changed in that moment because the bad guy lived and has been doing shit for the last 30 years in canon and 15 20 years in real life i mean i I, I will say uh i I knew palpatine was coming back into the film because they announced it at star wars celebration beforehand so that kind of reveal was ruined It, it was just how lazily they decided to just you know not even bother trying to attempt to explain it in the film it's just ah, somehow he's returned uh and, and, and thinking that was good I, I will say another great what the fuck slash surprise moment in the last jedi is when uh kylo kills snoke yes because it's just it, even in the moment when you know it's coming in the build-up it's just not something that you that happens like that and and the way it's shot is, is, is fantastic um what do you think is the legacy of this these films, these this trilogy. Let's let's talk about the Skywalker trilogy. What is the legacy of the Skywalker trilogy? I mean, I don't think you can just talk about Skywalker trilogy without talking about Star Wars as a wider um, thing, because uh, they're, they're one and the same. I think in many ways, you have shows which have spun off from it, but they are part of its legacy. And I think Star Wars is. <sighs> I think Star Wars and comic books have really become uh, mythology. In, in in the same way, if we think back to you know uh, the, the, the Greek pantheons and you know the Egyptian deities and you know the, the stories that we look back and laugh at you know religions and, and and ancient cultures for for having and believing in. I think Star Wars now is in a very real sense that for the twentieth and the twenty first centuries, people take these things incredibly seriously to to the point that they put so much weight and belief uh, and so much of themselves into it which i think is why you have so so many um spicy takes online and people get very upset if you if you talk shit about their favorite or if you like a thing that they don't like and and i really do think that uh you know th- these are now I, I i wouldn't be surprised at all if in 500 years time things like star wars were thought of in the same way as we think of things like Zeus and Hercules and the Odyssey and and, and things along those lines. I, I think that is ultimately the legacy of of, of Star Wars. It, it's it's 20, 20th century mythology. Despite the fact it's set a long time ago in a galaxy, in a galaxy far, far away. Far, far away, yeah. I think, I don't think you're, you're wrong in that. I do think Star Wars has that kind of place in in the world i think i think the legacy of star wars is us is people like us because it was such a gateway for so many into science fiction and fantasy and otherworldliness or you know there was no this is the first film i ever remember seeing that was like this and how I think it's fair to say that st- well I think we've definitely said it Star Wars completely revolutionised cinema and changed cinema irreconcilably yeah it, it, it changed <laughs> cinema forever and you know we could say well that was just the original but actually the prequels did the same they equally revolutionised cinema with the advent of digital um, filmmaking techniques and digital recording and then the sequels love them or hate them they completely yet again change the hollywood studio method and in my opinion not for the better the way we produce films and what we produce films for so the legacy for me of star wars is massive because we would not 
be here talking about these sort of things. We would not engage with these sort of things probably without Star Wars because it was so, despite the fact it's a combination of a lot of other things put together, it was a unique melting pot of stuff together. And I think you're right. I think it does have that air of Greek mythology about it and, you know, stuff like that. But also I think there's an element of, you know, the... the the earliest 20th century had Hans Christian Andersen and Brothers Grimm and those kind of stories. And I think that is our, you know, these are, I'm not going to say modern day fairy tales because again, they're not set now, but that's, that's a space they fill in our, our world. I'm just saying at some point there's going to be a council of Nicaea who's going to decide that the prequels are no longer canon and don't count. And we're not going to be included in the official recordings of the Skywalker saga going forward. <laughs> Controversially though, they will allow for Rise of Skywalker, so... Oh, yeah, because that's the one they made. They need to keep making money on that. Um, yeah. I mean, you say that that's essentially what Disney are doing with Fox's X-Men. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they did this when uh, Disney bought Star Wars and they de- declared the EU was now Legends and so forth. It, people redefine what, you know, what is true, what is tr- what is the truth there. And because people put so much of themselves into it, it really annoys them when it is no longer truth. Um, but, uh, yeah. Mm. There you go. So, final question. Final, okay. final question. What is next for Star Wars? And what would you like to see next from Star Wars? Uh, what is next for Star Wars? Well, I think the next one up is uh, Bad Batch Season 3 um, and possibly The Acolyte. Or is it Skeleton Crew? Skeleton Crew Season first. 2 is clearly coming along. Um, plus Mandalorian Season 4 is, is a given. Um, <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um I mean, Star Wars will continue to exist uh, as as, uh, as as content for Disney for as long as Disney is trying to push Disney+. Plus. They will not let it rest. They will not let it life arrow, uh, which is a shame, but that's just the way it is. Um, it, it, as far as films go with Star Wars, I imagine it's probably going to be Filoni spinning off something from the Mandoverse um, is the next film we're likely to get because... It's been such a tumultuous time trying to make any Disney uh, Star Wars film since The Rise of Skywalker. Um, uh, so I, I think that's what we're likely to get next. What would I like to see next? Are, are we talking specifically films? Uh, well, give me two parts. Give me specifically the films you'd like to see and then just more generically than that. Uh. I mean, as far as specifically the films I would like to see, there's, there's, there's maybe two answers there. I, I would love to see, <laughs> for my very particular niche sort of interest, I would love to see a almost Master and Commander-esque story about a rebellion frigate raiding Imperial lines, like a, a naval high drama thing. Not quite rogue squadron that Paddy Jenkins is going to do but you know along those sort of alliances uh, you know give like me a, a war story blower. like a horn blower give, give me a, a horn blower in Star Wars uh, that, that's, that's what I would quite like to see but failing that um, I don't really know because every time they've tried to move away from the original trilogy it's just caused people to be very very vocally angry and also if you're moving far enough away that you don't recognise it as Star Wars why call it Star Wars just call it something else make it an original property make it something new I have no interest in seeing Rebel Moon but he's basically making his Star Wars film there so more power to him um, I don't I don't honestly know what I would like to see going forward from Star Wars in the cinema the, the obvious answer you always used to be to see the Thrawn trilogy um but it looks like we're kind of getting that now in the TV shows and in the films and with Disney just doing it more for content than story. Um, yeah, I suppose what I would like to see, I would like to see you have a writer and a director who have a strong story and a passion to tell it and be allowed to do so. That's what I would like. So like Rogue One? Uh, I've already, I've been over my issues with Rogue One and I, I, I don't think Rogue One is as good as even you, mate. I, I think Rogue One was also... A, a, it was chopped down from what it could have been. Oh, yeah, but what I meant is a director came with, with this is what I want to make and they were given the money to go off and make it. And then allowed to make it, yes. Yes. Um, for me, I would like to see, in terms of the Star Wars universe, 
I would love to see some High Republic um, espionage meets spy thriller slash Arthurian knights with lightsabers uh, content because I'm I'm really bored of hanging around in this same sort of kind of sixty year period. I want to see. I, you know, we, we always talk about how wonderful the Jedi were. Well, all right, show me. Show me how wonderful these Jedi were. Or, you know, give me some some outlying Jedi. And that some of that is happening in the comics. Oh, look, it's happening in the comics. Um, but I'd like to see how some of that. How did you get that red arm, Rachel? <laughs> oh, well. Um, so I think I'd like to see that in live action. I would also like to see something... I'd like to see more war stuff from Star Wars, actually. I think that's what, you know, those sort of social commentaries on war are really good, and I'd like to see some... some Not quite Hormler in space, but that kind of... But if we're talking, like, one specific thing, I'd really love to see Dr. Aphra make it over to... Uh, to live action to a to a film oh yeah um, no I, I, that's, I mean that's basically indiana jones in space and i'm definitely here for that yeah lady indiana jones in space um if i have to stick to the time periods that we w- that we're already stuck with you know that the skywalk era i would really love to see some proper layer um stuff you know either after she's done her training so she's she's got a bit of jedi superpower or beforehand and see her be this badass woman that we all know her to be the self-rescuing princess um and really flesh out that character i i've certainly found it really interesting to go and watch all these films even solo twice um (laughs) yes maybe not solo twice but you know once i think i have nothing has hugely changed my mind other than a little bit of my opinion on the prequels but mostly my opinion has stayed the same and I love the ones I love and I still fucking hate Rise of Skywalker oh, that's fair I, I mean I, I think the biggest one for me is how much I enjoyed Skywalker uh, Solo compared to no, how much no, I no no I'm going to edit it how much you enjoyed Sky uh, <laughs> no, no you're not how, no, how much not. I enjoyed Solo uh, compared to my and, and, and I think a lot of that comes down to my experience with Andor since then, I can see the show it could be there. And it kind of makes me sad that that isn't a thing. Uh, I, I do love Andor and I, I really do think people should um, uh, check that out. Um, people should really check out Andor. Rachel. No idea what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I'd like to see more of that. Um, but yeah, uh, for, for me... <laughs> I, I will continue to, to watch and consume Star Wars media just because you know, Spaceships is my bag, baby. Uh, and, and, uh, and I will enjoy it. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what they will do with the films going forward. I will probably go and see them, uh, although I doubt I'll be doing any midnight screenings because, yeah, fuck that noise. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, I think on the whole, it's just important to remember that they're just stories. Uh, they're just fun little things. People shouldn't get too upset if you like... If, if you like something that you don't like, um, then it's fine. Live and let life, uh, by all means. Have, have have discussions about it. Have a joke. But if, if it starts getting heated and people getting angry about it, um, yeah, uh, chill. I mean, it's not like it's into darkness or anything. <laughs> I, think, I think you're right. I think these are great stories and they are cultural defining stories and the impact they've had on society and pop culture i don't think we can even begin to quantify in any of these podcasts but at the end of the day they are stories and we don't have to like what someone else created we don't have to agree with the choices that have been made and we don't have to agree with the direction people have chosen to tell their stories it might have not been what we've done but that is one person's creative choice when it is one person's creative choice i think I think I am glad to have existed in a time when I got to enjoy the the original series before the prequels and then the prequels and now the sequels. I'm not sure my opinion of Star Wars would be the same if I had been born in the sequels area. Yeah, I, I, I imagine it'd be, uh, it would be quite different um, growing up with this era now. Uh, yeah. But ultimately, I've had fun just discussing stories with someone else that loves discussing stories about silly fantasy spaceships and laser swords absolutely that's what I'm here for and you now have uh, 353 days to try and convince me to do another one of these bloody shows so uh, good yeah, luck we'll, with that we'll see we'll see we'll see I think uh, I think we could we could obviously uh, revisit Star hey, Andy, Wars does this smell like chloroform to you what 
<laughs> hey, you might come to me with an idea. It might happen. Oh, shit. Too much chloroform. <laughs>